Is it still worth nowadays to run those very old Mac Pros like the cheese grater or the trash can? And to answer that question, I'm going to compare the performance against the latest Intel Mac that you can get. Let's start. Welcome to Jesse's Flying and I know that a lot of you guys in the community are still working with the very old Mac Pros either the cheese grater or the trash cans or the Mac Pro 4.1, 5.1 or 6.1. But this is more than 10 year old hardware. And the question is, is it still worth doing all the stuff with like open core, install unsupported Mac OSs and try to keep these machines alive? Or should you just get a newer Mac and do everything way faster and maybe way cheaper? I did a comparison, benchmark comparison of my three Macs that I have here. The first one is the Mac Pro 5.1 from 2012 and that is maxed out with CPU and graphics. So to the specs, this machine has two Intel Xeon 5690 CPUs. These weren't even sold by Apple, but it's the latest and fastest Xeon that you can put into this machine that can handle it. And this one has a frequency of 3.46 and with a turbo boost up to 3.73 gigahertz. Each CPU has six cores real cores and that makes a total of 12 real cores 24 threads it has 32 gigabytes of ram and i tested it with an amd vega 56. why this graphics card because i can plug the vega 56 with an eGPU also into the mac pro 6 one and to this macbook pro so all three machines have the same graphics card and the Vega 56 is the fastest graphics card that you can use in your Mac Pro without doing any power mod to the power supply. So you can just plug it in and use the adapter cables to just supply the power via the main board. You don't have to alter the power supply or anything. You can go higher but I just wanted to keep it as stock as possible. The next is the Mac Pro 6.1, the trash can. Also maxed out with CPU, this is one Intel Xeon E5 2697 V2. That is the latest and fastest you can put into this Mac Pro. And it also has 32 gigabytes of RAM and the benchmarks were made with an eGPU, with an external GPU, the Vega 56. But this has to be connected via a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter because the Mac Pro only has Thunderbolt 2. And so we can also later in the video talk about if it makes any difference between Thunderbolt 2 connection to the graphics card compared to Thunderbolt 3 to the graphics card and that brings me to the latest newest Mac and that is my MacBook Pro. The official name is Mac Pro 2019 but this one is in case a 2020 MacBook Pro, the latest Intel Mac that you could ever buy. This one has an i9 9980HK CPU that is a 8 core also has 32 gigabytes of ram and so i connected the eGPU with the same radeon vega 56 and did all the benchmarks i think you will be surprised how the results will be now let's check at first cpu performance cpu performance was benchmarked with geekbench 4 and geekbench 5 and also with the Cinebench R23 benchmarks. And here you can see in the Geekbench four benchmarks, the single core and the multi-core performance. Single core is blue, multi-core is green. 
And here you can see it's just a small step from 3000 points to around 3600 points because it's just a small step in CPU evolution. It just so less time in between those Mac Pros compared to the 2019 MacBook Pro here with the i9 CPU with 5800 points nearly that's a big difference in single core performance but both Mac Pros have a 12 core CPU and this one is the highest you can get with an 8 core CPU so if you combine everything in just CPU power you see that the Mac Pro 2012 reaches nearly 28,000 points while the Mac Pro 2013 just is around 29,000 points and the MacBook Pro here that is at least six years younger just gets to 31,800 points that is not much of a big speed increase CPU wise between those three Macs if we talk about Geekbench 5 it's just different numbers because they changed the scoring but the picture is the same single core 674 to 791 that is not big step from 2012 to 13 to 1270 points here on the MacBook Pro but the overall performance when you put all cores together is 6700 for both Mac Pros more or less to 7500 points so if you buy this Mac Pro to gain a speed increase CPU wise against your Mac Pros sorry you won't feel that in everyday work and if we go to the Cinebench now comes the very surprising result single core it's the same 570 650 1200 about so it's increasing with the newer Macs but you can see here that the Mac Pro 2012 has the highest multi-core score and it's even faster with 8730 against the MacBook Pro from 2019 with 8360 how can that be and that is more or less because of the benchmarking process in Cinebench the Mac Pro 2012 reaches around 3.7 gigahertz the MacBook Pro here with the i9 reaches 5 gigahertz but it only has two-thirds of the cores so the sheer amount of real physical cores in the Mac Pro 12 against 8 with a high boost brings him a performance advantage against the brand new Intel MacBook Pro and that's the reason for the last place for the Mac Pro 2013 because this CPU only reaches around 3.5 gigahertz with turbo boost let's talk about gpu performance and that should be more or less the same because it's all a vega 56 it's the identical graphic card that i just put on every mac and we can see then if it makes a difference if you plug it in via an adapter to a thunderbolt 2 port in the Mac Pro 2013 or a Thunderbolt 3 here in the MacBook Pro and here you can see again the Mac Pro 2012 the old cheese grater is the fastest in the GPU Geekbench score and the reason is simple because with the Mac Pro 2012 you just plug the GPU into a PCI Express port and you don't need a Thunderbolt controller either Thunderbolt 2 or 3 to let it talk to the CPU and the rest of the system and that brings a performance of 144,000 against 134,000 in Geekbench 4 and 55,000 to 50,000 in Geekbench 5 the second you can see here is that it doesn't make any difference if you have just GPU performance if you plug the GPU in by a Thunderbolt 2 or Thunderbolt 3 both the Mac Pro 6.1 from 2013 and the MacBook Pro from 2019 
both reach around 134, 132,000 points or 50 against 51,000 points. The total performance is the one thing that is of interest, right? Because it's just theoretical numbers. If the CPU is this fast and the GPU is that fast, we want to know how fast is the whole system. And this brings me to the gaming benchmark from Unigine, and that is the benchmark Heaven from 2009 and the benchmark Valley from 2013. And if you look in this performance chart here, another surprise with the Heaven benchmark from 2009, the Mac Pro 2012, leads with 1,900 points against the Mac Pro from 2013 with 1,500 points and against the MacBook Pro from 2019 with 1,700 points. Total performance. So you say the 11-year-old Mac Pro is faster with rendering the Unigine Heaven benchmark than this MacBook Pro. Yes, it is. When you use the same graphics card, obviously, but why? The Mac Pro 2012 has the graphics card directly into a PCI Express with 16 lanes connected to the CPU and to the rest of the system. But that is not all. Another factor, and that is why the Mac Pro 2013 and the MacBook Pro 2019 are so bad is because it's such old software. It's software from 2009 that is not adapting to new CPU features. With every new iteration, Intel adds new features and new code sets so that the CPU can handle calculations more efficient and faster obviously with less power or more calculations with the same amount of power. But when the old software Heaven from 2009 is not using the new feature sets, then the newer CPUs don't have any advantage because they have to calculate it the same way as the older CPUs. And here you can see 12 cores with high boost 3.7 gigahertz in the Mac Pro 2012 is faster with the PCI Express Vega 56 that has a faster connection than the Mac Pro 2013 that has a slower boosting CPU and a Thunderbolt 2 connection to the uh, GPU or the MacBook Pro 2019. And the proof you can see in the benchmark Valley. That is from 2013 and that is already a little bit more optimized to newer CPU set and code sets. There isn't much difference between the Mac Pro 2012 and the Mac Pro 2013. Why? Because the CPU is a little bit more efficient because of newer code sets, but it's slower with the boost and it has a Thunderbolt 2 controller in between the CPU and the graphics card instead of the PCI Express slot. So these equal out. So you have the same performance with those two Mac Pros, but then with a MacBook Pro with Thunderbolt 3 and a way more efficient CPU, there is a way higher score around 3280. And there is one more thing that comes into the uh, whole comparison with the benchmarks. As newer the Mac gets, the more faster the RAM, the memory is, and the interconnection between CPU, RAM, graphics cards, and everything else. So the newer Macs have more overall system speed. And that you can see when we go to the Nova Bench 4 benchmark, that is from 2017. I know there is a Nova Bench 5 already, but this didn't work out so well with the very old Mac Pro 2012. So I stick with the Nova Bench 4. And here you can see the CPU benchmarks 1700 for Mac Pro 2012, 
Nearly the same with Mac Pro 2013. Same here. Same amount of cores. Little more advanced feature set, but a little less frequency. So that equals out. And then you have the only eight core CPU in the MacBook Pro. So that makes last place for this one here because it's just missing one third of the cores. But with graphics, you see 590 to 627. That is the graphic uh, between the Mac Pro 2012 and 13. And you say, oh, 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 wait, you just told me that the Mac Pro 2012 that has PCI Express connection is faster than the one with Thunderbolt 2. Right, but this benchmark here is a complete rendering scene where the score is coming from. It's just not like a pure GPU benchmark. And so the overall system speed that I mentioned before comes a little bit into the play when this graphics benchmark is scored. And that is why I don't call a GPU benchmark, it's a graphics benchmark. You can see a little increase from Mac Pro 2012 to 13 because the overall speed, the memory speed and all this is a little bit faster, but not that much. And then you see here, but the overall system speed and the overall memory speed in the MacBook Pro is quite faster than in the old Mac Pros. So this gives me a graphic score of 830. RAM or memory speed obviously increases from 250 to 60. That's not big of a deal between the two Mac Pros, but to 320 because this year is very fast memory. And so the overall score just shows the benchmark that maybe you have expected at the beginning of the video from 2600 to 2700 to 2900 scores overall when you compare those Macs. I have to admit I didn't expect these results at the beginning of my benchmarks either. So what's the conclusion of this video? At first if you own a Mac Pro 2012 or 13, there is no need to upgrade to an Intel Mac performance wise. It's newer, yes, the hardware is newer and it's officially supported for Ventura, but you can do a lot of stuff with the open core and the open core legacy patcher. And my advice is for all both of them, the Mac Pros, stay with Monterey latest version and you can just do everything you want with those machines with nearly the exact same speed than with the Mac Pro Pro. But otherwise it's a big and heavy case sitting on or below your desk or it's that little trash can that you cannot upgrade in any way. And this one here is a very sleek and light portable MacBook Pro that you can just take everywhere you want. And that was my reason for buying it because uh, as you can see it just moved to the US and my stuff is being brought by a move company in a few weeks so I could just not take my Mac Pros with me in the luggage on an airplane which is totally fine when you have a MacBook Pro with the same power and the same performance as the Mac Pros. Stay tuned for my next video where I will just go through the main Mac models and give you advice which Mac OS I suggest should be the latest you install and how you can do that. If you haven't yet, I would recommend you subscribe to the channel to don't miss any news. And as you already saw in my shorts here on YouTube, maybe be careful with updating an unsupported Mac to the newest update of macOS, especially Ventura, I recommend switch the automatic updates off and wait until you get news on my channel here um, that I can tell you it's safe to update or not or if you need a new version of the Open Core Legacy Patcher or not because otherwise you might end up in any boot loops or get problems with microphone uh, settings and so on. So thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.